Bye. I'm Chris from Windows. You caught me on kind of a busy day, but not too busy to let you do this. Because this is Air Windows Silken. So what you may ask is Silken? Well, the idea here is I'm starting with that Prime FIR plugin that I made. It did a thing where it would do a, um, a brick wall filter. It's a, a highs roll off. It is a low pass filter. And I had something built into it called a prime control, which let you expand out the uh, taps of the filter in a peculiar way so that it wasn't actually trying to do every sample. It was doing samples that were prime numbers. So what would happen if you took, for instance, a guitar sound? And rather than roll off a brick wall filter taking away highs, you made a brick wall filter that took away lows. And it would be something like this. And you got your frequency control. You'll notice that it is also boosting the high band as it is cutting the low. So it's very much a high frequency enhancer. But there's more. Because the deal is, with the Prime FIR filter, it had that setting where you would only be constructing the filter out of prime numbered samples. And that gave it a weird combination between a filter and a ambience effect. It did a thing where it acted like it was doing a, um, like my bright ambience or something like that. So what happens when you have a lot of that? And the filter is taking away lows rather than highs, as you hear here. And turns out, if you're subtracting lows using this type of brick wall, and you're constructing a weird filter that nobody else does, in which it's using only prime numbers, but instead of doing that, you use only composite numbers or non-prime numbers for the subtracting. What do you get? You get an incredibly steep brick wall filter that can be used to cut lows. But through that is peaking prime numbered bits of ambience that don't belong in the sound. And because it is a FIR filter, because it is a brick wall filter, which has, you know, it's a linear phase, so it has pre-echo. So this basically has ambience pre-echo. Why, you might ask? Well, the answer is because it seemed like it might be a good idea to do on, for instance, a voice. Let me get a not very good, but what do you want for nothing rubber biscuit? A uh, vo vocal track going. It's a little bit unfair. Oh, and As I, the dead of heart. I do have to make it a uh, loop to play it over and over. You can do this. It's a little bit unfair. Surely 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 it's a unfair it might be, but it is the kind of cheating, uh, cheating that you can really get something out of. Because what's happening is it's taking a voice 
it'll take out the lows, which is the same as boosting the highs. In fact, it does boost the highs in the process. And what's being let through is the um, ambience and added detail kind of around the direct sound. So something that happens when you've got certain kinds of, you might even find it with this because uh, my lovely uh, Roswell mic uh, randomly broke, possibly because I had been mounting it upside down to do my work. And I'm back on the Sennheiser and people had complained about the high frequencies of the Sennheiser. Well, you can get even worse in terms of high frequencies if you're using, for instance, a lavalier mic. Certain tiny lavalier mics are excruciating and it's because the tiny uh, microphone elements pick up supersonic sounds incredibly well, but it's incredibly accurate. So you have exactly one spike for any sound that comes out of it. And so it's a hyper focus effect that is aggressive and unpleasant. But if you use this one, if you use Air Windows Silken, you can boost the highs quite a lot, but the highs are also going to be blurred out using that ambient effect. And I'll show you again. It's a little bit unfair. Surely it's a little bit unfair. Surely it's a So that's extremely bit annoying. Surely yet it's a little bit unfair. Surely it's a little bit unfair. Surely it There's a whole blur thing happening to the highs which will take away some of the annoying quality of it. And you might notice it does still have very much an annoying quality to it. That's because I'm using an extremely wide window. Listen to what happens now. Surely it's a little bit unfair. 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 Surely. So what's happening with this is window determines the width of the brick wall filter, which again, that's a linear phase filter. It has pre echo. You're controlling how much pre-echo it has. This plugin also has a great deal of latency, but Window can help control that if you like it to do so that way. So we can also do this on the drum. Again, crank it all the way up. If there's no window, it's not actually doing the hype. If you bring in enough window, that's going to start to introduce a little bit of latency, but also spread out the high frequency sounds in that way that it does. It's the silken, it's the smoothing things around. And then if we increase that even more, We start getting into these zones where it's really focused on the highest of frequencies. And it doesn't take much window to get a really steep, almost resonant quality out of that cutoff. You hear little changes as it moves the window. Sorry, I just did that for fun. Point being, Silken, here. I'm finished playing Annoying Things. This is for you to use. I don't always have time to make an exceptional recording of something to demonstrate this stuff with. So if you don't like what that sounds like, try using it on your thing. Maybe you're a far better musician than I am. Fair amount of the time, that's quite true. 
Soken is there for you to be able to hype up high frequencies in things like lead vocals, in things maybe not with drums. Remember, it does a indeterminate amount of latency, so you might want to be cautious about that. The latency changes depending upon how the settings are set, so I can't really declare a version of it. Um, I think it's going to come in handy for vocals. I think it's going to come in handy for a lot of vocals because it's pretty common to want to get that blurring effect and the additional detail that you get out of it. I think it's going to help people a lot that way, but we'll see. I mean, it's it's out there. Now, who knows? Maybe it's, people will use it in a way I didn't even expect. Those are the best. I'm completely distracted, so I'm going to get off of the recording now. Happily, unlike last week, the recording didn't stop in the middle of recording and force me to redo it. This morning, I have done the final updates on a tweak that I've done to my Bezier downsampling code, which completely removes a high frequency ring in uh, normal use and completely revamps both kinds of uh, D-Res in those plugins, both the stepped D-Res for the for the reverbs and things where it's not supposed to sound unnatural, I've improved those substantially. And the unstepped D-Res where it is um, swooping down in a weird sort of... It, the code was very complicated. What ended up happening was I was writing code like you know, this thing minus um, x to the power of 1 divided by x. And it, is, it got messy, but I got there. And there are 19 plugins I've already put out with this code, some of which are pretty harmless, like the compressors you're not really going to notice. Things like cans I'm a little bit anxious about because people use those for reference listening. And I think it's going to matter that I'm able to improve this code, but then I've also got better reverb algorithms than I used in the original CANS and CANS AW, so we shall see. And of course, DRES 3 used this, so you can still use what it is, but then it seems like I could do an additional DRES as well. And there's two plugins that use this type of code that aren't even out yet. Guitar Hall 2, K Guitar Hall 2, and K Alien Spaceship. And I might just see a update to K Cathedral, in other words, a K Cathedral 5, simply because this is that big of an update on that. I know it's recent. I know K Cathedral just came out. But I might be able to improve it using this as much as it was an improvement over K Cathedral 3. And I'm also thinking in terms of since both of these downsampling directions and deresing directions work so well, I'm imagining a different form of deres where full resolution is in the middle at 0 0.5, and then swoop it one direction for the stepped and swoop it the other direction for a kind of grimier, high frequency artifactier. But that's I would say that's work for another day, except for that's work for the rest of today. But I do also have to make this video. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to get back to work doing those things. Uh, my work is, of course, supported by my Patreon. I'm happy to say that that's still going fine. And yeah, the more people help me, typically the more I can do. And I have a bunch on my plate, so I'm going to get right back to it. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.